This file is like package.json, but it is for your entire development environment. So in Project IDX, you can configure whatever you want to use. So languages, extensions, environment variables, uh, databases, all sorts of things all in one file. But why would you do it in one file instead of just running an installer? So like, let's say I want to try bun. It's you know a new, hot uh, JavaScript runtime. If I type in bun, it says it's not installed. If I want to install it, hit enter. Well, I don't want to install it that way. I want an entire manifest of every tool that I'm using and all the versions involved with it as well. So instead, I can actually, I can search for it in here and say bun. And I see that it's, uh, you know, its name is bun. Uh, I could type it as well. I could say pkgs.bun. And now when I rebuild this environment, IDX is going to go out, download the dependency and rebuild it in the entire environment. And just pretty quickly now, as I pop open my terminal, I can say bun dash dash help. And, and now I have bun. So that, that's, that's pretty cool. But this is, you know, this is pretty basic. Uh, I wanted to show a more complex example. So what about running Postgres? So I could ask to search for Postgres and this would put Postgres on my machine, but I want to run Postgres. So every time my machine boots up, I want it to run uh, you know, my, my local database instance and, and manage all that for me. So instead of that being a package, this is actually a different API we have called services, where there's Docker runs as a service. So it installs the Docker CLI and the Docker daemon. So that's Docker config, just like one line of code, MongoDB, MySQL, Postgres. So in this case, I'm going to say Postgres. I'm going to open this up as an object because now I have a whole set of configuration. I can say enable is true, but I also can specify extensions. So I can get PG vector and all these other ones. Uh, and so now that I have that, I'll rebuild the environment. And this, just like before, it installs it, it starts to set it up. But now, because it's a database, because it has a whole set of responsibilities that it needs, it's going to spin it up whenever this uh, workstation runs. So clicking here into the IDX extension and I click on backend ports, this is like my favorite feature with an IDX. Every single process you run that spins up a port, it gets listed right here. So you see the port number, uh, you know, the, the local host port that is, and also the uh, process ID. And if you click this, it, it'll open it up, uh, you know, which isn't useful for, for Postgres in this case, but it, you know, it's just it's such a good feature. Now, I know I'm running Postgres, so I want to I want to do something with it. So here I have the official Postgres template for IDX, and so I'm gonna just copy and paste some of these commands out of here. And if I go into into here, I can actually tap into the lifecycle of a workstation. So I can say workspace and Within here, I can tap into this thing called onCreate. And so when this workspace is created, I can do, I can run a command. So for setup, so I'll paste these in here. And what this will do is it will uh, create a user. It will create a database called YouTube. It'll run a create script, which creates the structure and then uh, run the example query from there. So I don't have all that stuff yet. So we're gonna, we're gonna set that up here. And to do that, I'm going to just drag and drop this JSON file over of all these uh, YouTube video data. And then let's go back to the template where we can just totally copy and paste the, uh, the SQL examples like the, like the good developer I am. So I'll create create.sql. And, and to be fair to myself, I did actually write this code. And by, by me, I mean Gemini wrote this code. Uh, and then I'll get the example script as well. So we're, we're going to do this whole thing from scratch because that's the cool way. So now I have these written. And so now whenever this workstation spins up, it's going to run this. So I need to rebuild the environment because every time you change the dev.nix file, it needs to rebuild everything. So it spins up, but it's actually not going to do it. And that is because this workstation has been created. So onCreate only runs once, we've already had it. So it's a bit of a chicken and the egg problem. So to fix this, I can just search for onCreate and Project IDX will run the onCreate hooks. So now I'll do that and boom, 
just like that. Here are all of the, the, the data in the database all written out. And so what's amazing about this is, is that now this whole file, if I port this to another IDX workstation, send this to a friend or do whatever, everyone has access to the file. We're all gonna be on the same versions and the same tooling and everything. And so when we keep track of everything in one file, it acts as this awesome manifest that shows everything that works on the machine and everything is consistent everywhere. So Project IDX in Nix, uh, setting everything up through this way, it's amazing. Uh, I would love to see what you all are gonna do with it because I, I never know how to end these videos. It's just, just you know, show me this, show me the, the, the Nick stuff. I, I love it. All right, see ya.